Are we damned? Are we doomed? Sequestered in our stagnant rooms I haven't seen the sun in days So tell me how my life has changed We trash, thrive on what you throw away Austerities are every day Sad to hear you've been forced underground Gonna have to learn to like it somehow. Ah. Oh shit, there it is. All right, hello, welcome to episode six, I think, of uh, comedians in cores getting COVID. Huh? No. Uh, <laughs> no, comedians on couches getting quarantined. Um, I, we're, we're referencing the uh, famous Jerry Seinfeld series, um, <laughs> but we're applying it to the quarantine situation. Uh, we are here with our friend, Steve Hernandez, um, hero to many, uh, former youth pastor, comedian. Um, here we are. Welcome, Steve. Thank you guys so much for having me. That's great, Kate, to see your bangs up close. Now, I really yeah, do I, see. <laughs> I trim them. Steve, there's been a question that I have been itching to ask you all day, and I'm mm-hmm. just going to straight up hijack this conversation to get your thoughts on the matter. Okay. What is the impact of the coronavirus going to be on the polyamory community? This seems uh, devastating for polyjules. I actually, and this is a real thing I talked to Julie about too, um, is I actually think it's it's better for us. These first few weeks in the first month is going to be rough. But I told her, it's funny, because my girlfriend, Julia Loken, who's a comic, she has a hit podcast called What's Your Sign? And I'm always trying to conv- talk her into this shit. She's never really buying into it, but she knows it's a part of who I am. But I told her, dude, doesn't this seem right during all this stuff? If this lasts, let's say, three months, deep quarantine, wouldn't it seem right then, once you figured out that, okay, this person has had it, or you know, it's safe, to just go spend the night with someone for a couple of days to share them in quarantine. That makes sense to me. So, like, um, so, okay, so, so you have, like, a, a you're still poly, but it's kind of a, a closed situation. Like, you're in multiple relationships, but you're kind of, like, not looking for new people. You're just with oh, your... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No like, new people. It's poly, but it's committed. Wait, I get it. This is going to turn everything into that dating app for people that like have herpes. Yes. Situation. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would start a new thing, but, but maybe you would. Cause um, I don't, I mean, I know you guys are probably seeing each other or something like that, but if you are kind of in an open thing, um, then I would think that I mean, I'm getting more tempted to just reach out to people and just take a swing because nobody gives a fuck right now. So people where I thought they've had a crush on me or we're vibing each other online, I'm just being like, hey, what the fuck? You want to FaceTime? And by FaceTiming, then you start talking. And then, like I said, in like two months when we're still quarantined, it's like, hey, let's have a first date where we just spend two days together and see how that goes. I, I can't imagine a first date where you spend two days together, but it would it would certainly be an interesting new way of dating. Um, yeah, I uh, that's really intense. I can barely make it through forty five minutes of a first date. Sometimes I have left. I think after fifteen or twenty, in some cases. Be- <laughs> it's well, all poly stuff in general. I think is so geared towards. It's like the best for men anyway, because women are generally pretty great. And guys are pretty, generally pretty terrible. So whenever I speak about Polly too, I, you know, I'm talking to Julie about it, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, you can experience all these things and do all this stuff." And she's like, uh, "I've had enough." When I go on a first date, I like to show off this ba- blanket that I bought on. Um, uh, it was an advertised to me on <laughs> on uh, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. It says backwards because of the app doesn't work. It says a bunch of things like about you don't fuck with a guy named Jake. There's two of them. Another one says it's Flores, and I'm gonna get both of the blankets and hang them next to each other on my walls. And that is how I get women to get into polyamorous relationships with me. As they're impressed by my bedding. 
You know, I've been doing poly stuff for so long. By the way, Jake, when you tweeted out that Flores blanket, that thing made me laugh so hard. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, poly has gotten so – I've been doing it for so long. I absolutely am not trying to convince anybody about it anymore. It's just I'm not that guy. I don't give a shit. The reason why I talk about it so much in my comedy and all my podcast stuff is to just find the fellow freaks who already think like this. Uh, it's like, I'm not any normal person. Forget it. I don't want to talk you into this, but if you're, if you are queer and if you're open to this kind of shit, I'm just putting out the bat signal, but I, get out of here with trying to talk anyone into it. Give me a break. Stand up is really good for that sort of thing. It's like, a you can just get on stage and just really, really obviously signal or dog whistle, whatever the fuck you're trying to make happen after the show, whether it be forms of drugs or sex or whatever. Yeah, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it like uh, stand-up has been, I think, a lot of people's main way of getting laid for a long time. Like, I think that, you know, a lot of to stand up uh, as a way of like uh, you know increasing their uh, desirability to women um, and it's gonna be like an interesting thing to like see people readjust as we move towards a uh, long term potentially no live stand up world so, like a lot of uh, a lot of people are going to have to learn to get laid in a new way. I don't think it works that way for women because I think the fact that like I am a stand up, like I I think I'm more likely to get flirted with like by someone who has never seen me do stand up. I don't know. What do you I th think? I think that uh, you're right in that like. See, here's the thing. Stand-ups always say, like, oh, I can only date other comedians because they're the only people that understand me. That's not true. You're right what you're saying. The reason comedians all date each other is because we're the only people that we can get to fuck us. Like, because the, the only, <laughs> only other comedians think this is cool or impressive at all. You know? Or, like, the, 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 the 0.1% 1 .1 of people in the audience that are there on purpose, those people will fuck you. But those people generally just start doing stand-up, too. Oh, yeah, that's why I've never done the apps. I'll never do the apps because in the apps, I'm just a fat Mexican bartender. Like, there's nothing going on for me. But in the comedy world, I can, I get Julia Lo, I get my girlfriend who's like a stone cold fox because she's somewhere along the line, she thinks comedy is important. And I'm like, hey, man, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. How long, what are you, what are you thinking, Steve? How, what's your prediction for how long uh, stand-up will be gone for? Well, Kate, I know you, we've texted about this, and you think, you think 2020 is done, right? I sure. You know, I'm, I, I'm not sure because there's so many, like, different opinions. There's so many, like, even in the best-case scenario situation, there's a... Uh, you know, there's no large groups for a while, but I would say that when bars reopen, there will be some form of stand up, even if it's not large shows, you know? So I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, 2020 is done. Now I'm more worried that uh, the governors and Trump are gonna reopen everything preliminarily, you know, before it's really safe to do so. So I've kind I, of switched. I'm personally very worried that Trump is going to reopen the comedy clubs. That, like, specifically. <laughs> he, I heard he's already like he's already told Skankfest South to go on in August or something like that. So I don't know. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> festival. <laughs> Many beautiful people. Big names, some of the biggest names out there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, have you seen this guy, Big Jay Okerson? He's very big. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he loves adjectives like that. He's so big, <laughs> folks. He's a big boy. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to check in before we wrap up here. Um, Steve, do you have any quarantine tips for how to stay 
happy, sane, healthy during this trying time? Um, I do. If you are lucky enough to be quarantined with someone, make sure you guys are having sex every other day if you're able to do that. Um, but uh, I, yeah, like I haven't felt like having sex. You know, I if I come across as I don't think I've been coming across as horny on Twitter during this time. But we've made ourselves have sex because it just kind of reminds you once you get going. It's like, oh yeah, this is what we're alive for. Um, but. Uh, make sure you can have sex if you, you're partnered up or if you have someone like that. Uh, and then I, uh, you know, eat bad if you want to eat bad and then eat healthy every other day. But don't feel guilty and don't think too hard um, about the future right now. Just really live in the moment. Eckhart Toll, Toll style. <laughs> that seems <laughs> like a good idea. I have not been having a lot of sex. I am stricken with UTI during this time. Yes. Yeah, that that's rough. Let me ask you this. Can you, do you have, if you have a UTI, can you still get eaten out or do you even have that desire anymore? No, your whole, uh, your whole badge and everything around it hurts. Um, yeah, I, uh, hopefully we'll be better soon. I don't know why. I'm talking about this uh, on a <laughs> show that I'm going to put on the internet, uh, but here we are. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me on, guys. All right. I'll see you later, Steve. Thank you so much. You bet. I'll see you guys soon. This is exactly what I expected from you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> well, she asked me Polly stuff right away. What do you want me to say? No, I know. It's exactly what I was expecting. The advice I expected was, yeah, everyone. Fuck. All right. So, welcome to the underground. Cocked and loaded, locked down. You're the rat. We're gonna watch it all burn When the ashes settle